My name is Hamid Chojai. I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Pure Chat, which is a new startup on live as a live chat company. And today I'm going to be talking about important SaaS metrics that you need to know about your <coughs> software company, uh, whether you work at a software company or if you're starting a software company. Um, these are the type of uh, metrics that are sort of important to know. Now, before I get into the sort of meat of the subject, uh, one thing this talk is not going to help you or the metrics are not going to help you is to find a perfect product market fit. So uh, before the metrics become important, you actually have to have something that is a product market fit. Um, so I equate this to, so uh, if you were looking for oil and we were going around drilling for oil at various different places, uh, eventually we have to find an oil well that's gushing oil out before the metrics become important and measuring how many gallons of oil per or liters of oil per minute are coming out of that uh, hole and whether the flow is increasing or decreasing or how much oil you can expect coming out of that well, you won't know how to, um, uh, the, the metrics of measuring all of those things won't be important until you've found that hole. So finding a good product, uh, product market fit is first before the metrics become important. Now, once you've found that uh, oil hole, uh, the metrics become important because then it tells you how many politicians you can buy and how long you can sort of pollute the environment for. <laughs> right. So I've struck oil three times, uh, once with AxoSoft, then uh, with Transfer Big Files, and most uh, recently with PureChat. Uh, and I'm going to actually use some of the information from PureChat, some real numbers to share with you guys. So hopefully this talk will be a little bit uh, sort of useful. Uh, one of the key and initial and simple metrics to sort of uh, know about your business is your conversion rate. So the conversion rate is basically the number of people who are coming to your website. How many of them are turning into uh, trial or demo leads? Uh, that's one conversion rate. And of course, you can have conversion rates for various different things. Uh, of the visitors that come to your website, if you're converting 10% of them into trial or demo, that's pretty good. And then what percentage of them are actually t turning into paying customers? Um, and that is another sort of conversion rate. 10% of trials pay, uh, turning into paying customers would also be pretty good. Uh, but what that means is that of your website visitors, essentially 1% in this sort of example are turning into uh, paying customers. Or your conversion from website visitor to paying customer is 1%. From trial to paying customer uh, is 10%. This is often referred to as a conversion funnel, and you might have more than three steps in your funnel. There might be website visitors, they might visit a, f a few different pages which might uh, categorize them or you might categorize them in your business as a hotter lead. Uh, maybe there's steps in between trial and demo where they talk to salespeople, uh, and those, uh, that funnel sort of determines uh, your customers coming into your website, and then a fewer of them are signing up for a demo, fewer of them are talking to a salesperson, and fewer of them are, are actually turning into paying customers. Uh, the way you uh, determine what your conversion rate is is just paying customers divided by number of leads. This is one example of uh, leads to paying uh, customers conversion rate, and that's pretty simple, 10%. So I apologize in advance, but this talk is very math, uh, simple math intensive, and it's relatively dry. So the rest of this talk is going to be much like this. Uh, another one of the uh, most important sort of metrics is uh, the monthly recurring revenue. This is probably the most important uh, measure of a SaaS company's success, monthly recurring revenues. Uh, and what that means is that if you have one customer and that customer is paying you $100 per month, your monthly recurring revenue in this scenario is just $100 per month. Now, things get complicated when you have some customers that are paying you on an annual basis. Maybe they're paying you up front. So in the same month, you might have two customers. One of them that pays you $100, signs up for a $100 monthly account. Another one that signs up for a $1,000 annual account and pays you up front. So your revenues that month, or the cash coming in was $1,100. But your monthly recurring revenue from that second one is actually $83 per month for the next 12 months. So that's how MRR is calculated, monthly recurring revenue. So in this scenario, that $1,000 per year customer is actually worth $83 in MRR. So your total MRR, monthly recurring revenue, is $183 in this scenario, right? Um, and uh, one of the uh, sort of metrics that, again, uh, uh, VCs and uh, potential investors are going to want to know about is your MRR growth. Uh, this is where uh, if you map this over the course of multiple months, and these are actual numbers for uh, Pure Chat's uh, MRR, monthly recurring revenue. So we started charging for our product in September of last year. 
We had 3,000 in that first month of MRR. It raised to 5,000 and seven and nine, and in January to 16. And you can see sort of here, our MRR increase month over month was $2,000. Uh, and then in January, it was actually $7,000 for a variety of reasons. Uh, but in any case, this growth is what a lot of potential investors are going to care about. So that's the MRR, net MRR growth number that you're going to want to know. Um, annual recurring revenue, another sort of key metric, is just basically your uh, monthly recurring revenue multiplied by 12. So if you have $183 in our example of monthly recurring revenue, you multiply that by 12 you have $2,200 in annual recurring revenue. So in our two uh, customer example, one of, us was one of them was paying us $1,000 a year. Um, and you know, obviously in a year, you're gonna get $1,000 from them. Uh, the other one was paying us $100 per month. And after a year, you're gonna get $1,200 from them. So you add 1,200 and 1,000, and that's where the 2,200 comes from. So it's pretty simple in terms of how you calculate these things. But some of the other stuff, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, more complicated calculations that's also going to come up frequently uh, is the customer lifetime value. So when you get a new customer, what is that customer worth to your business? Uh, this is a really important metric to know because knowing this uh, helps you determine how much should you be spending to acquire a new customer, right? So to calculate the customer lifetime value, uh, you actually have to know a few other things. One is, what is the average revenue per customer that you're getting? Um, sometimes referred to as ARPU because uh, they like to pronounce uh, abbreviations. So <laughs> ARPC is hard, harder to sort of pronounce. So average revenue per user is easier to pronounce instead of customer. So uh, that's where ARPU comes from. And the way you calculate this is going back to our sort of two customer example where you have two customers paying you different amounts, um, but they're paying you $183 of MRR, monthly recurring revenue in, in essence. Uh, if you divide that 183 by the two customers you have, in this convoluted example, we have $92 per month um, per customer. That's our average revenue per customer. So now that we know our average revenue per customer, if we could uh, multiply that by the number of months our average customer remains a customer, we would know what our customer lifetime value is. So now the key question is, how do you know how many months your average customer is going to remain a customer? And unfortunately for startups, that's virtually impossible to know. But once you have enough statistical, uh, enough customers where you have statistically significant data, you can actually calculate without all of your customers having canceled on you <laughs> before that point in time. You can calculate uh, how long your average customer is going to stay with you. Uh, and the way you do that calculation is called attrition or churn. Uh, and what you do is you take the total number of cancellations that you get in a given month, so the total number of customers that cancel, divided by the total number of customers that you have. Right? So in, in a given month, for example, if you have five cancellations out of 100 customers, then your attrition rate or churn rate is 5%. So knowing that you're losing five customers uh, out of 100 or 5% of your customers every month, uh, you know that the average customer is going to remain with you for approximately 20 months. That's just 1 divided by 5% or 100% divided by 5% and you get 20 months. So now all of a sudden it becomes super easy to determine what your customer lifetime value is based on your churn information, which is basically the $92 in our example of average revenue per customer times average customer is going to remain with us for 20 months. Um, this is going to be an 1800 In this example, the customer lifetime value is $1,840. Now, the reason that's super important to know, the CLV, is because now you can determine, okay, I can spend up to a certain amount that I'm comfortable with and, uh, uh, before, for acquiring each customer. If you were spending $2,000 for every customer you were acquiring, you would immediately know you're spending too much money to acquire customers. Maybe your price is too low. Uh, maybe there's other factors that you need to sort of adjust, but that's not going to be a scalable factor. So one question might be, what is the amount that I should be able to spend if I have $1,800 in uh, average customer lifetime value? Uh, and the answer to that is that uh, you, have to, uh, you have to figure out your sort of customer acquisition costs to know uh, what you're spending first to acquire the customer, and then you can sort of determine what your ratio needs to be. And I'll get to the ratio in just a second. But to determine your customer acquisition costs, or again, CAC, because we like to pronounce the abbreviations, 
So the co uh, total cost of sales and marketing is what you take uh, sum up. Uh, and that includes sort of advertising, anything that you're doing, conferences, uh, the payroll costs of those people. Uh, and you divide it by the total number of new customers that you're acquiring with that spend. So an example of that might be that if you're spending $50,000 uh, let's say per month or per year, whatever the time frame, doesn't matter. But within that time frame, how many new customers are you acquiring? And you, multi, uh, or excuse me, you divide those two numbers, uh, and that is your customer acquisition cost, your CAC. So in this scenario, we're spending $50,000 for 100 new customers. Our CAC is $500. So if we had a CAC of 500 and the average revenue per customer was $1,840, our uh, CLV to CAC ratio is 3.6, which is actually a pretty decent number. So you want this number to be greater than 3, essentially. Right. So that's all I have as far as sort of throwing all the terminology at you. And then now what I want to do is actually show you some real uh, dashboard statistics from the live uh, pure chat dashboard.